Some good news and some not so good news over the weekend at high school playoff football. Justin Jarrett has more. Hey, Loco sports fans and WHHI viewers. Welcome back from what was a busy weekend for Team Loco with four big high school football playoff games on tap. And it's getting late, so every game means more now. We had two Loco squads putting their seasons on the line at home under the Friday night lights, and then two more going for gold on Saturday afternoon. So let's get to the highlights. It's time for Loco Lights on WHHI, powered by LocoSports.com. We'll start with Saturday's games at Charleston Southern because state titles were on the line, beginning with the Skiza 1A Championship and the Thomas Hayward Rebels seeking their fifth consecutive crown against a Lee Academy team eager to take the throne after losing to THA in the title game the last two years. It was an even matchup early on, but the Cavaliers took the upper hand after star senior Anthony Fripp left with an ankle injury that put him on crutches on the sideline and freshman phenom Tony O'Banner followed him to the bench with an ankle injury of his own, leaving the Rebels shorthanded in a game they needed to have their best to win. Lee's Deshaun Haddon scored three touchdowns and Hampton Gaskins added one, and the Cavaliers' defense came up with some huge plays in the red zone to stymie the Rebels and end THA's title run at four. Their heart and determination never wavered all year. Like you said, not many people coming into the season gave us a chance to be back on this field. And uh, they played with that chip on their shoulder and came to work every day determined to get back here. Colleton Prep taking on Williamsburg Academy in the nightcap for the Skiza 2A championship. And the Warhawks defense kept them in it early, forcing the fumble here with Cole Davis on the recovery to deny the Stallions points. And then Davis from his own end zone swings it out to Walker Bryan who breaks a tackle. Makes a man miss, and he scoots up the sideline for a 99-yard touchdown, tying the national record for the who-knows-how-many-th time and giving CPA the lead. Williamsburg came right back with an efficient drive capped by one of Teague Ward's four touchdowns on the evening, but the Warhawks went back to the air and got back on top as Davis goes up top for Caden Crosby, who makes a nice play to haul it in and keep his balance, racing to the end zone for a 14-7 lead. But Ward and the Stallions' powerful offense were too much for Colleton Prep to overcome as Williamsburg wears down Colleton Prep and wins it 41-21 for its first title since 2013. We lose uh, so much. Uh, and, Congratulations you know, We don't even to want Stallion. to face that yet, but we know we got to. So come here in a week or so, we're going to really have to say, okay, look at all we just lost, and it's going to be a ton. But uh, what we got coming back, you know, gives us a lot of excitement for next year. Um, you know, got a lot of guys coming back who, who have still had a lot of snaps. And, you know, there's something about every one of these kids play so hard. So we do lose a lot, but the ones coming back we're excited about. A night earlier, it was the public school squads doing battle in the third round of the playoffs with the winners marching on to the state's Final Four. It was a historic night in Estill as the Gators played their final home game before the schools merged with Wade Hampton High School and the Gators ran into a buzzsaw. Xavier Garvin threw two touchdown passes to senior Angelo Lewis who had a great night in his swan song, but cross star Amante McCray dominated in the trenches and Carmelo Montgomery and quarterback Tyler Mungin broke it open late to lead the Trojans to a 34-16 win and close the history books on, on Estill Gators football. Heck of a season. Been a heck of a season on Ladies Island too, and the Buford Eagles got to play in front of the home crowd one last time Friday with the Gilbert Indians coming to visit. It was a battle all night long with Casey Fields and Samari Bonds leading Buford in a matchup of strong rushing attacks, but it was a special teams play that changed everything. After taking a 21-17 lead, Gilbert made the fatal mistake of kicking it deep to Colton Ferries, and that usually doesn't end well. The Indians had Ferries pinned to the sideline at the 32, but he retreats, fights off a double leg takedown like only a state champion wrestler can, then shows off some sick breakaway speed, sprinting out of a pack of would-be tacklers all the way to the end zone to give Buford the lead for good. Fields tacked on his second touchdown run of the night, and then it was Ferries sealing it for the second straight week with a pick, running the tip drill, and sending the Eagles on to the next one, Friday night at undefeated Dillon. We'll let you know how it goes Friday night on Loco Pigskin Live, powered by LocoSports.com. Check out our social media channels for the link. For WHHI and Loco Sports, I'm Justin Jarrett. Until next time, go Loco. 
Coming up next, a chance for you to help a guy who has been helping folks over in Ukraine for the last few months. Stay with us.